This question appeared on one of our many videos about writing SQL for Excel files. What this viewer wants to know is how to reference a field name which includes a dot. I've got an example set up to demonstrate how this works. I've got a macro enabled workbook with some code that lets us select data from a separate Excel file called movies. I've got a couple of column headings in here which have got a full stop or a period character in them and we'll write some code to select those columns. I've got both these files stored in the same folder and I'll drop a link in the video description so you can download these so you've got the same data to work with. And just to show you the basic code, we've got a simple subroutine setup which allows us to set the SQL query text. So at the moment I'm selecting the film ID and the title columns from the film worksheet in that workbook. All of the rest of the code just deals with connecting to the movie's workbook and then writing the results out into a new worksheet. I'm not going to go into how all that works because we've got a couple of playlists set up which go into that in hideous amounts of detail. So if you're interested, Excel VBA working with databases, Excel VBA writing SQL for Excel using ADODB. Those are the playlists you need. Anyway, at the moment, if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor, if I just run this subroutine, I will find that I end up with a brand new worksheet in my dot in a field name workbook with a film ID and title columns. OK, now let's try to include the release date column in the same select list. If we look back at the movie's workbook, you can see the release date column name has a full stop somewhere in the middle there. And if we look back at the code I've written so far to refer to the film ID and title columns, you can see why that full stop might be a problem. I have done a little more here than I absolutely needed to. I've qualified each column name in the select list with a reference to the sheet that it belongs to. And to separate the sheet name from the column name, we must use a full stop character. This isn't entirely necessary for this example. This code would work quite happily without the reference to the sheet name in front of each column name. But it's helpful, I think, to understand why the full stop is a problem. So I'm going to copy and paste my film title column reference, including the reference to the sheet name and the extra comma. Then we can replace title with release dot date. Now, of course, Excel is going to try to interpret this full stop as a separator between a sheet reference and a column reference. But if I try to run this subroutine again, that's not going to work, of course. So I get this error message. So I click OK to clear that message and look at how we can solve this problem. The solution to this problem is actually incredibly simple, if not entirely obvious. If you have a column name which includes a full stop character, you can replace the full stop character with a hash symbol or a pound symbol, and that will solve the problem. If we run the subroutine again now, we'll end up with a new worksheet, and this one has a release hash date with the values from the column we've referred to. Now, while that solution wasn't exactly obvious, there is one relatively straightforward way we could find that out. Rather than trying to refer to each column by name, we could just ask the query to return all of the columns from the worksheet. So if we head back to the Visual Basic Editor, we could just replace all of these individual column references here with an asterisk character to select every column. So there is one extra column in the movie's workbook which has a full stop at the end of its name there, run time with a full stop at the end. If we run this subroutine now, we'll end up with a worksheet which contains the ADO names for every column in that sheet. Just while we're on the subject, there is one other character you may have a problem with if you include it in a column name. So I'm just going to head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I'd like to explicitly select the title, release date and genre columns from my movie's workbook. So I'm not going to bother with the qualified column references this time. I won't bother referencing the worksheet first. Let's just refer to title, comma, release, hash, date, and comma, genre. Okay, so having done that, I can happily run this subroutine and end up with a new worksheet, including those three column names. Now I'm going to head back to the movie's workbook, and I'm going to modify the genre column name by adding an exclamation mark character to the end. Having done that, if I head back to the Visual Basic Editor and I try to include that exclamation mark character at the end of the genre column name, when I run the subroutine, I'll end up with an error message. Again, the exclamation mark character is replaced with another character in the query. If I click OK, then change the exclamation mark character to an underscore character instead. When I run the subroutine this time, have a look back at the results, I'll see that I've now got the genre column included. 
So there you go. I hope that was enough to answer the original question. And if not, as always, feel free to carry on asking more questions. Otherwise, I hope that helped. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.